it, according to the Bible and Christianity, you know, salvation is a term that is synonymous with a lot of terms like redemption, reconciliation, justification. In Christianity, we basically say those are synonymous of all the same act. And that act is that God, through his mercy, reconciled us to himself, according to 2 Corinthians 5.19. He redeemed us through the blood of Jesus Christ. We have the forgiveness of sins. We are saved. Now the Bible passage, I think even many LDS people know Christians use, and we use it because it's so clear, is Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. By grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So on that passage, we believe that we are saved and salvation means a whole lot more than resurrection. We believe that salvation means living forever with Heavenly Father in eternity, living in His presence. People who are saved, everyone will be in Heavenly Father's presence. People who aren't saved, they won't be in Heavenly Father's presence. It has nothing to do with resurrection in, in, in the classic Christian terminology. And that salvation is based entirely on Christ's work. It's by God's grace, His undeserved love for us. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that He gave His Son. Salvation is based entirely on Jesus' work. The, the sobering fact, and this is one of the differences between Christianity and Mormonism, the sobering fact is that Jesus also taught in the Sermon on the Mount that wide is the road that leads to destruction, and many are on it. Narrow is the gate to eternal life. And, and what we believe is that not everybody will be saved. The only people who are saved will live, eat, go to heaven, be with Heavenly Father for all eternity, are those who are pla placing all of their trust in Jesus. So when I stand before God on Judgment Day, the only thing I will want to present to Him are Jesus' works. I don't want any of my works in the picture. I want to clothe myself in Jesus' robe of righteousness. Uh, just one last verse, and now I'll turn over to Doug. I love Hebrews 10 verse 14 where it says, by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Right through Christ's one offering, I am perfect right now in, in God's sight because I am wearing Christ's perfection. Okay, well, uh, thanks for that again, Pastor. Uh, I, uh, I have to uh, uh, stress, and it's in this kind of a format, it's, all, it's a little difficult to get this stream of consciousness going that we would yeah. like to have but but for the latter-day saints it's totally different because the idea of jesus christ and the salvation and the role of him and 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 how we are justified and so on before him was taught to adam adam was baptized when he asked the lord why do men need to be baptized then the lord explained it very very clearly it has it has to do with our ability to come unto Jesus, to come unto to the God of, of uh, Israel is what it amounts to. So uh, if I read from there, he would uh, say uh, the answer to the Father uh, in terms of uh, answering uh, the question that was given to Adam. He says that by reason of transgression cometh the fall bringeth uh, which br fall bringeth death and inasmuch as ye have been born into the world by water and blood and the spirit which i have made god says and so become of dust a living soul even so you must be born again that's the first requirement even the bl uh, born again into the kingdom of heaven of water and of the spirit and be cleansed by blood, even the blood of mine only begotten, that ye might be sanctified from all sin and enjoy the words of eternal life in this world and eternal life in the world to come, even immortal glory. For by the water you keep the commandment, by the Spirit ye are justified, and by the blood ye are sanctified. 
Therefore it is given to abide in you the record of heaven, the comforter, the peaceable things of immortal glory, the truth of all things, that which quickeneth all things, that which maketh all things alive, that which knoweth all things and hath all power according to wisdom, mercy, truth, justice, and judgment. And now I behold, now behold, I say unto you, this is the plan of salvation unto all men through the blood of mine only begotten who shall come in the meridian of time. And behold, all things have their likeness and so on. He goes on. But that is the best description I can give of how the Latter-day Saints understand salvation.